The referee taking the Michael Mauricio Pochettino is a funny one. The Spurs boss is normally calm as anything after a defeat and gets himself all worked up after a win, which perhaps shows he really means what he's saying, and this match was no different. The Argentine is far less reluctant to criticize referees than his counterparts across the league, but when it came to another decision from Michael Oliver that upset him, he just had to let loose. Sun Heung-min certainly made the most of a challenge from Harry Maguire early on, but to decide it was a dive and book the South Korean star was a stretch, unbelievable in Pochettino's eyes. What was most telling, and presumably Mr. Ignored by Oliver, was that Maguire pointed outside the box in the immediate aftermath of Sun hitting the deck, trying to tell the referee it should be a free kick not a penalty. He then changed his stance to claim that the Spurs man was diving after Oliver pointed the other way. That Leicester were then handed a penalty at the other end for what looked to be minimal contact when Jan Verdenen and James Madison came together sent Pochettino over the edge and he brought up another big Wembley gaffe from Oliver from earlier in the season. Today do you think that Sonny deserved to be booked? Unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. When you compare the situation with the penalty against us, unbelievable, he said. The problem is I told Michael Oliver, the situation of Liverpool in the last minute that should be a penalty, when Sun was brought down by Maine to maybe be 2-2, maybe 2-1, but it was a clear penalty. It was the same referee, but now I don't know how he has measured the situation. It is so difficult. I am a person that always accepts the mistake, but I think it was so strange the situation today. He added, it was so clear the position today with Sonny, the action, but it wasn't clear the position of Madison when he was on the floor. I think it is unbelievable. I am more relaxed because we won the game, three important points we got, but so disappointed with the situation because everyone wants to talk about different clubs or players, but do you think we are a team that is trying to cheat the referee? Come on, we are the most innocent people on the pitch. It was a tough day for Spurs with Oliver. They did not earn a single free kick until the 52nd minute of the match. When it came it was accompanied by a big cheer from the Wembley crowd. Pochettino, known in his day as a defender who was more than happy to employ the dark arts of football, has often complained that his team is too nice on the pitch. The referees, Michael Oliver in particular, seem to disagree. Loris comes up trumps Hugo Loris's role as a sweeper-keeper means he will make mistakes from time to time. Perhaps those errors mean he's never truly recognized for what he's achieved and capable of in the game. For me Hugo is one of the best goalkeepers in the world. He showed it of course in the World Cup as he lifted the trophy and in five, six years here with Tottenham, said Pochettino. He was key today. When you need this type of performance from your top player, for him it's a fantastic feeling and he is going to feel amazing now because he helped the team to three points. Not normally known for penalty saves, Loris stepped up when he was needed at Wembley to guess correctly and push away Jamie Vardy's kick which would have leveled the game. He then came up trumps when it mattered again around five minutes later as Harvey Barnes found himself free and unmarked in the Tottenham box. The Frenchman thrust out his foot to stop the young Fox's midfielder's shot from crossing the line, David DeG style. 
In a season when Polo Gazaniga's performances, mostly in the cup competitions, have ramped up the pressure on Tottenham's number one some fans have called for a change between the sticks. However, it would require a real run of horror show performances from Loris for Pochettino to even start to think about taking his captain out of the team. There is an enormous amount of mutual respect between the World Cup winner and the Tottenham manager. Loris has had opportunities to leave the club over the years but is stuck with Pochettino's project, believing in the end game. There are far more important saves from the Frenchman than there are kicking gaffes or mistimed runs out of his box. I think he's showing his value and in decisive moments," said Pochettino. His quality is there and we cannot doubt that. Fixture madness this has been the season of circumstances. It's Pochettino favorite word and Tottenham have had more thrown at them than any other team and we won't list all of the problems here yet again. However, where the club could have been helped somewhat is in kinder fixture scheduling. Whether that's because of the broadcasting companies involved or the Premier League's aversion to saying no to changes to the set list. Premier League managers coming from other leagues often say that in their previous countries of work, every effort was made to give their teams more rest ahead of European competition. In England, it seems to be the opposite. English teams going far in the Champions League is a great advert for the Premier League, but that doesn't seem to be taken into consideration. Pochettino went on a lengthy rant about how he couldn't understand why after a week's break, Spurs fixture just had to be on a Sunday with the Champions League last 16 clash against Borussia Dortmund on the Wednesday. Here is every word of Pochettino's thoughts on the subject. I was telling your colleague before about how upset I am. I feel so embarrassed because I can accept to play today, if Dortmund play today, and then we play Wednesday, but I cannot understand why we're playing with a massive disadvantage," he said. 24 hours in this type of competition, the last 16, is a massive disadvantage. It doesn't mean that we're not going to compete. For me, I'm going to stop describing the real situation, but I think there is no sense. It is so difficult to understand why, when we had one week clear to play this game and to schedule it on a different day, and only I am explaining my feelings and how difficult it is to prepare a game when you only have today and then you're going to need to play. We came from a very tough period. In England it's a busy period at Christmas. It's January when clubs in Germany, Spain, or Italy enjoy some holidays and rest. That is why, if you can be in a similar level, you need to play with the same situation. That is why I feel so disappointed. I don't use it as an excuse. I'm not going to explain anymore. I think today is going to be the last time I complain, and I hope that you describe and send the right message, not Pochettino is crying. Only describe the situation. I think you understand very well my feelings and the feelings of the staff and players too. But you know that doesn't mean we are going to play in a different way. We believe that we can win and beat them. We believe that we are going to give our best and be competitive and arrive in our best form. But of course I need to describe the situation, if not who backs us. During the season we are fighting a lot of circumstances and that is one more. Remember when we played Manchester City on a Monday and played West Ham at the London Stadium in the Carabao Cup on Wednesday. 
We played Monday evening and Wednesday evening. People talk about this squad, but my players are heroes. What happens happens at the end of the season, they are going to be remembered, if we win some title, in the history but if not, in the history too, because all of the circumstances against how we are fighting and showing character is amazing. Pochettino has previously described how he's created a bubble at Spurs to try to keep all the circumstances outside and the squad's energy and fight inside. It's a them and us scenario, but one that's very different to the kind Jose Mourinho employs. Right now, with Spurs just five points off the top, it seems to be doing the trick nicely. Magnificent Musa the Musa Sissoko transformation continues at pace. The Spurs fans were singing his name in the final minutes as he embarked on a string of lung-busting runs past challenge after challenge to release the pressure valve on Leicester's attacks and get the ball up the other end of the pitch. Sissoko sealed an energetic selfless display with the curling ball into Sun's path that evaded the Fox's defense and sent the South Korean attacker on his way to score Tottenham's third. The Frenchman is now among the first names on the team sheet. Even those fans who once seized upon Sissoko's every mistake are now struggling to hide away from throwing compliments his way. The midfielder has found his place in Pochettino's side, he knows his job to the letter, and in the same way as N'Golo Conte covers for everyone at Chelsea, as he did at Leicester, Sissoko's name on the team sheet is like having an 11th and 12th man out there, a complete contrast to the days when he used to be considered a passenger. While Harry Winks was tiring in the game's final stages after another industrious performance, Sissoko appeared to be getting stronger, surging past opponents as if they were flies to be swatted away. It is fitting that in a campaign, when Tottenham have had to battle against everything thrown at them, Sissoko has emerged as arguably their star of the season. He's taken everything that's come his way the criticism, the abuse on social media, the drop in confidence, being left out of France's World Cup winning squad, and he's come out the other end stronger for it. Pochettino loves the professionalism of the midfielder, and he's a popular player among the tight-knit Tottenham squad. If you'd have told anyone 18 months ago that Musa Sissoko would be the key man in Tottenham's midfield you'd have been laughed at. He's not only that now, but he's in with a real shot of being named the club's player of the year at the end of it all, if his last three months are as good as the rest. Contrasting fortunes when Tottenham and Dortmund meet on Wednesday night it will be a very different scenario that faces Pochettino's men to the doom and gloom predicted some weeks ago. When the draw for the Champions League last 16 was made on December 17, there was a sharp intake of breath from many. Dortmund were the runaway Bundesliga leaders and Tottenham had a massive challenge on their hands. Yet since that day the club's fortunes have been somewhat contrasting. Due to the German winter break, Dortmund have played just seven times, winning only three of those matches, losing two and drawing two. Tottenham have taken part in exactly double that amount of games having played 14 times since the draw is made. Despite losing Harry Kane, Del Alli and Son during that time they've won 10 of those matches, losing two league games and two cup ties. Also noticeable has been the amount of goals, despite the key absences, as they've hit the back of the net 34 times in those 14 games since the last 16 draw was made. Sun is back, 
and has scored in each of the three games since his return from the Asian Cup, making it 10 goals for him in his last 10 matches for Spurs. He also knows very well what it takes to play Bundesliga sides after his years at Bayer Leverkusen and before that joining Hamburg's academy as a 16-year-old. There are also whispers that a certain Harry Kane might yet make an appearance on the bench. Pochettino had indicated that the Burnley match on February 23 might be a more realistic return date, but the presence of Kane on the bench would send a powerful message to their opponents of Machine coming back a month earlier than expected. With or without him, Spurs are in a good way right now. They've won four on the trot in the Premier League, and all of them featuring late goals born through a real fighting spirit within the camp. Dortmund will present a tough test, but this Pochettino side fears nobody. Keep up to date with the latest Tottenham Hotspur news, features and exclusives from football. London VOR free WhatsApp service. Text news to 0777619789 and then add the number to your phone contacts book as spurs.london, case sensitive, with spaces, to receive daily updates and breaking news from Alasdair Gold and the team on Spurs. Your phone number won't be shared with any other members of the group. Click here for more information on the service.